before we get into today's episode, it is almost the end of the year, it's almost tax season, and Nick and I are so excited to announce a new sponsor of the How to Film Weddings podcast. That is Core Financial. Uh, John has used them for a couple of years for doing his books and his taxes and his financial planning. I was talking to him about this time last year and he recommended Core to me and I have been using them for all of 2019. Guys, girls, people listening, what is probably the most stressful thing that you have to deal with regularly in your business? I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's books, taxes, and accounting, all of that. Would you agree, John? A hundred percent. And having the team, Jeremy and the team over at Core, you know, as basically another member of my team, an extension of my team, I've been able to focus on what really matters and that's running my business and taking care of clients. So we are just so pumped to have an option for you out there. They're nationwide. And so if you're interested, you know, definitely check them out. We're going to have episodes with them on soon, but we just wanted to jump on here before the episode to tell you how excited we are and stay tuned for more from Core Financial. And if you would like more information about Core and what they can do for you, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash core, and you can find out all of the information about them doing bookkeeping, about them doing your taxes, about them giving you a financial plan so that you should know if you should spend money in your business or not in the following months. It's a great investment. Yes, it costs some money, but it's going to save you so much money in the long run by hiring a company like this. We are so excited to have Core on board as one of our sponsors. I think anyone listening should take the pressure off themselves as well if there's just not a story there. It's okay if you can only, your goal should be able to make each wedding as good as it can be from what you learned. Happy New Year. Happy 2020. Welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. I'm Nick Miller and I am joined by John Bunn. John, how are you doing today? I am great. It is a new year. I am feeling strong. I've been eating clean. I've been exercising. And I think that at the beginning of the year, there's this new fresh energy. Um, You know, it's 2020. It's a new decade. Lots of good things going on, including today's episode of the podcast. Yes, we had Matt Harris on from The Film Poets. If you don't know The Film Poets, like where have you been? Whenever John and I started this podcast, we made a short list of our dream people to come on it. Matt was definitely on that list. The film poets were on that list. We were so glad to finally get him on. He, their their films are gorgeous. They tell these amazing stories, um, just emotional films. And so we we talked to him a lot about building the story, figuring the story, finding out the story. And also he talked a lot about um, audio presets and audio and making your your vocals and all that sounds and all that stuff sound very, very good. Oh man, John, anything else you can say about it before we jump in? I just think that like the dude and his wife are so good at telling real stories. And that is something I'm challenging myself with in 2020. If you need kind of a kick in the butt to get yourself excited about the wedding season coming up, we thought the best way to start out 2020 would be to have Matt on with the film poets. So that's all I have to add. I guess, Nick, we can jump on in to this week's episode of the podcast. Let's jump in. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. You have been on our list of people we've wanted on our podcast since the beginning, and we are so excited to finally have you on the podcast. Why don't you say hello, introduce yourself, tell us just a little bit about you and your company. Oh, thank you guys for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm a, I'm an original, um, originally a musician uh, when I was 19, and that was our first career. Um, I do this with my wife, uh, Pacey. Uh, we shoot together, but we we're also in a band together. And uh, we did that for 10 or 12 years and I fell in love with filmmaking. Just, you know, saw my first, uh, I don't know what you call it, cinematic style wedding film, um, probably 2012. And uh, as you guys probably experienced yourself, you know, when you see something like that and just kind of felt feel pulled um 
into creating, you know, wanted to create something along those same lines. Um, I went through that sort of same experience and just uh, kind of followed the passion for it. And here I am. And I've seen online and we'll probably have to post some in the show notes, some really awesome photos of you in your heyday, uh, your um, emo, like some really <laughs> awesome photos of you that have surfaced. So we'll try to have to pull those up or, you know, if you have one, be sure to, you know, tag Matt in an uh, Instagram post today for sure. But so you, you were in music, you saw some cinematic films, you started getting going Were you, you were married already at that point. Yeah. Um, Pacey and I met, uh, we were 19, I was 19, she was 24. We got, I got married at 25. So, okay. um, yeah, we've been married for a long time by then. Okay. And then, so you get into filmmaking, what year was the first year that you did, um, you know, a wedding under the film poets or under your, your brand? When, when did you start? Kind of what did it look like then too? We had the film poets name, um, like before we started shooting because we already had a career we were able to just think about think long and hard about it it wasn't like oh we got to do this and, and you know start making income it was more like it was this crossover uh sort of thing so um you know our very first wedding was under the film poets um this was 2012 i think and that year okay. you know we just did three weddings maybe for like our first one was free for a friend um and then maybe the Second one was like that, and then I think by the uh, the third or fourth wedding, we you know started charging and were able to uh, you know realize that we could you know kind of make a make a living doing it. So yeah. out so, of yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So out of you and your wife, who who was the one that like really had the idea first, or did you kind of just come at it together, or like how did how did that all happen? It was it was really me just being pulled into it, and she plays a huge role in everything that we do. But the the impetus and just kind of what started um, was just was just me being like, check this out, look what look what exists. You know, it looks like a movie, mm-hmm. but it's real life, and but it's it's even better. You know, it's just like, and yeah, you know, I remember showing my in laws this, and they were just like, Wait, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense to some people, I guess, you know, especially yep. back then when you're mm-hmm. kind of caught off guard when the idea of a wedding video to someone who's, you know, older is like what they know from like VHS days and stuff and two yeah. hours long. Yeah, and in 2012, I mean, that's kind of like at the very beginning of, you know, some of these newer cameras and things like that and being able to see that. I remember that feeling as well, just like what if we could create these cinematic movies as opposed to like Uncle Al with a, the camera and the bright light, just kind of having people wave at, you know, the bright light and the camera and stuff. And so, so that's 2012. We fast forward. We're now into 2020. Happy New Year. Um, what does 2020 look like for you guys? Are you guys still, you know, you guys shooting a ton? I know you've done some educational things. What are you guys looking at? You know, kind of how did 2019, you know, it turn out and then 2020, like how many are you shooting? All that kind of stuff. So um, 2019 was our uh, biggest year um, in terms of, you know, how much the, the company brought in. And I just nice. I never would have thought it would have grown um, the way that it has, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and uh, so that was that was great. Um, for the first several years, you know, we were doing 28 to 30 weddings, something like that. And I always said I wanted 24 and then we booked 28 or 30, 32, something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember talking to photographers and be like, you know, like how, how many weddings y'all doing? And, uh, you know, there were, I, I, for some reason, I always found this pattern they would either do like 12 to 16 or they would be doing 30 or so, you know I mean? There's <laughs> like, it was just kind of those two ranges. And I remember always kind of getting jealous thinking about, oh man, you're doing 16. That sounds nice. You know, yeah. I want to do that. Um, but then we would do 28 the next year. And, and you know, the, <laughs> the, those extra weddings you book after doing 16 or 18 or the, you know the the last eight weddings are much harder than the first fifteen because you're you're just tied depending on how they fall in the season you know it's possible they sure. you get a ton in a row so anyhow um, this past year we did uh, for twenty nineteen we did like eighteen weddings instead of twenty eight and still That's perfect um, did did really well with it I think twenty twenty one to kind of dial that back even more a little bit just to uh, just to have some playing room with other ideas you know and just mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Um, just get some room with that. So we want to be, um, we just want to do weddings that we're really passionate about uh, up front. 
And that's, mm-hmm. that's always kind of hard. That's a trick to, to figure out like what how sure. you don't, a lot of times you don't really know much about the couple until you get closer to the wedding day. So I can't say that it's always going to be like that. But. Yeah. And you know, you said one thing about, you know, you, you've set a number and you, you, you're, you're limiting more and more of your time. So you have room to play and to be creative. I think a lot of us um, get so, you know, it's the same story where you get going and then a lot of people want to book you, you're underpriced, uh, you overbook, you feel like you're going to burn out. You finally get to this like happy place. And I think, you know, in our podcast, we talk a lot about, you know, only taking weddings that, you know, you really want to be doing, or you're really passionate about doing, but also balancing that with being able to pay your bills. And, and so there's this dance that you're playing as you're, you're growing your business and now, you know, you're in your ninth or so year doing this, um, being able to shoot, you know, 18 weddings last year, maybe less, you know, this year, um, what, what kind of does a 2020 package look like for the film poets? Like if somebody wants to book you, is there a minimum mm-hmm. you're charging? What all are they getting? What's kind of, you know, your happy place for, for all of that? So our packages have always been a little bit different um, than some of the others out there. Uh, by that I mean we uh, we've always offered a 20 minute doc edit like in our pa- it's not this afterthought add on or anything. It's always kind of been there. Um, mm-hmm. And then you know I know it's pretty popular to either upsell that or take it off. Um, I've always I'm still like you know I, I don't claim to have this all figured out on what's best with the packages in any way. Um, there's an advantage to me to offering a, uh, we and we just call it like a wedding day film. That's our 20 minute doc edit. I don't call it a doc edit. That's a internal term, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, uh, you know, our uh, 2019, our starting package was just that, right? It's just this 20 minute film with a full ceremony. And we're from the Southeast, people, can kind of get weird if you don't give them their ceremony. People are very sentimental. So I've never really been, uh, tried to upsell that. I've heard some, you know, but it's, I know that that can work really well as well, but, um, we never really experimented with that, but, uh, that was our base. And like, it's just there to have this, uh, this entry level way to, to, to have us at the wedding. Like one person might book it a year. Second package is like mm-hmm. highlights only with a ceremony. The one we push is a combination package, I called it, and it's the 20 minute wedding film with a you know, five to six minute highlights, whatever, um, and the ceremony. And then they can add rehearsal dinner and you know several other things. I mm-hmm. have, there's a lot of reasons where I like that. Um, and most of them uh, come from, I think a reason a lot of people wanna do just kind of like highlights only, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an advertisement for your brand. It's kind of like your best foot forward. It's your most creative thing. Uh, and I think mm-hmm. that's all true. I just find that I can be even more creative when I don't have to think, is it okay to cut this out of the highlights film? Right. Yeah, that's because I, and 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 then I don't have to think. Well, do I really want? Like, I can just say I'm just going to move it to this film. Um, and so there isn't this this voice in the back of my head being like, well, she's really going to want this because you can always say that. You can. I mean, you can make an argument for not cutting anything right for from the bride's point Mm -hmm. of view Mm -hmm. so much of editing is taking out good things to to leave room for great things yeah that's awesome and i i've noticed that and nick does that too where it's like you know i feel this pressure sometimes to include everything because it it does have some significance but there's this freedom that comes with like yeah it's going to be over here in this long edit though it's not going to so i can make this shorter edit you know pop way more and be more fulfilling to me as an artist so that that's huge um what like price range somebody to kind of book you where where does it start to kind of book the film poets for 2020 um i haven't looked at 20 i mean like you, you know, I haven't like looked at our averages, but 2019, I know just averaging everything out. Um, and by the way, I'm, I, you know, I feel kind of funny talking about money, but I do want to talk, you know, I'm happy to discuss it just because I know that it's business sure. helpful for, to know the market. And I know that you guys ballpark are, range is all we're looking for. Just so the listeners oh, no, 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 you don't no, have I, to I, tell I, us how much money you made. What you, what was your taxable income this year? Yeah. And who'd you vote for? Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, I'm just saying like I, people, you know, it's a weird thing talking about prices because it depends on where your heart yep. is when you're talking about it. And then where the mm-hmm. other person's heart is. Cause people can be like, that's 
great that you grew that big or you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it, it can it can be strange where it's just like oh you suck yep. you you did you know and so um you know i just you know want everybody to know you know it's just like i'm i feel um blessed to have grown the business to where it is Absolutely. and uh yes. and so like our 20 um 19 average was 12,800 uh per wedding before any upsells or anything um we i think about half of those maybe a little less were in town some of the other ones were you know not in town meaning like you know I, four hours is in town to me just what i consider you know i can drive it mm-hmm. the same day um and then you know we did a good bit of destinations we do wrap um our travel in our package price uh sorry and so we do wrap our, our pack our um travel in the package price so you know sometimes there's a you know 800 to 1200 in travel going right. coming off of that so mm-hmm. maybe the take home's a little bit less on that yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you, you kind of jump in there. Sorry, Nick. Um, but I do think it's like really important for people to know because we are trying to help people get to certain spots. And I think that, you know, w- some of the things Nick and I really want to dive into with you are things, you know, involving how you've gotten to this point to be an encouragement mm-hmm. to people. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you think about like charging over 10,000 for wedding films, like that doesn't just happen. It's not like that's on accident. So there's some purposeful steps that I'm sure you've taken. Um, so thanks for kind of giving us that ballpark range. Sorry, Nick. No, no, I, I was I was basically going to say, you know, something very similar. Thank you. Thank oh, you for sorry. sharing that. No, no, it's OK. You just asked me to do the next point and I thought I could, you know flow from the wrap up into it's like the next 85 point. podcasts in and we still just right we're still, we still a bunch know of goobers over here yeah. um <laughs> no I, again that that is a problem that there's that mindset someone in year two you know they think well i can't i can't charge that well yeah but you know matt you know you're in you know year nine you know i'm in year nine john's in you know year 27 or something you know like we've been we've been doing it all for a while and so we've built this stuff so it's not something that just happened you know the people that are able to charge that overnight from when they start that's the exception that's not the rule so right. um anyway thank you for sharing that one thing that i wanted to come back on you know you talked about you and your wife pacey being a you know a husband and wife team and um you know working together so we did get you know some of questions in our facebook group we have a facebook group facebook.howtofilmweddings.com if you'd like to join yeah, we that do. and be a part of the conversation and stuff um got several questions kind of asking about you and your wife and what your roles are and what you do so um i know cliff brought this question up and um you know just what what do you do maybe before the wedding and what do you do after wedding um on the wedding day you know kind of kind of what are your roles and how do you handle handle the business side with her sure um so the uh the business side is um you know pretty simple she she handles most of the inquiries and everything um and uh go in, sh- she'll handle the client contact all the way up until about uh you know 10 days before the wedding is when we have our FaceTime chat with a couple um and that's when we really you know spend the time to get to know them i've you know anytime i've really tried to invest a lot of time in a couple well before a wedding it's so hard because you have so many other weddings are going to happen in between then and my mind turns to mush i can't really invest yeah. in getting to know them too That's much good. until i can dedicate this is this is your yep. time where I, I want to know your story and it's going to stick and it's going to be mm-hmm. fresh on my mind on the wedding day so um i do facetime chats with a couple uh like i said most of the time it's a it's a do you both do that wedding. just do you me. both do that okay Okay. It's just me. And one of the reasons is I mean, we have two kids, right? So it's hard yeah. to, you know, if she was, if she were sitting in here with me right now, uh, the kids would be burning down the house. There's no telling. Right. Um, and, and so <laughs> Amen, she's brother. actually, yeah, she just left with the kids and it's, it's great. But, um, you know, that sort of thing is, is kind of just me. I let them know like a little bit of what Pacey will be doing. Um, but beforehand, it's really just me kind of getting to know <clears throat> the, the story and that's huge, you know, and I, I think, you guys would agree that, you know, that the contact before the wedding is, uh, so important. I've never done a wedding where I did not have a good hour talk or more with the couple beforehand. Um, it would tear, like, I just wouldn't want to do, I couldn't serve them, um, in the way that they would be expecting if they, they couldn't make time for that. So, um, 
up until then, that's that's what we do. There, there, there on the wedding day, you know, we we share roles. She's, you know, the, I, uh, you know, I call her the solid, and I'm sure you guys have uh, have that. You know, it's just like if I'm doing moving shots, she's she's got the safety so that we can cut mm-hmm. too because I'm doing stupid stuff most of the time that gets cut, and you know, I need to rely on her. So just that sort of standard split between first and second shooter uh, styles, but. Um, when it comes to editing is when we really start to uh, teamwork together on what we want to do um, before him, you know, before the wedding, after the FaceTime chat, I, I like to think about this story. I want to whittle down what this couple's story is as much as I could get from a one hour chat. Um, but I feel like our one hour chats are really, really effective. I know some guys, um, take the couples out for drinks or uh, meet with them for dinner. And we've done that a couple of times when we first started. I always feel like there's like a need for small talk in person, right? Like, and mm-hmm. and that's cool, but I feel like it gets away from the purpose. So like when we have our FaceTime chats and, and a suggestion, if someone wants to do this, um, is just to let them know up front. It's not like, hey, I wanna get to know you and stuff. It's like, I wanna learn you know as much as I can about you and your story so that I can create the best film for you guys you know, yeah. tomorrow or, or on the wedding day. And um, it just kind of gives this purpose and this focus to it. So when we're talking, it's just like, man, you know, let me ask you this and that and that. And it's it sets it up for being okay for me to be like digging and interviewing and asking stuff that I wouldn't ask, you know, at over dinner really, you know? Cause yeah. sometimes, I mean, a lot of, you know, we'll get couples that they're a family member had just passed away or it's all sorts of family situations that happen and stuff. And I want them to be at ease with talking to me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, it makes a difference in the film. You don't want to be shooting, uh, a, a, a something that is sensitive or you don't want to miss something that is very important that you would just glance over had you not known. So, um, that's a big yeah. part of it. Yeah, man, I I really, really liked what you said. It was kind of a passing comment, but I really like that you said that you get you do these long, you know, hour long interview kind of things with your couples so that you can serve them really well. I, I, John and I are really big on, you know, services kind of both in our businesses. And and I love how how you you said that you want to serve them well. You want to give them the best thing that you can do. You want to be there for them. So you get to know them. And I'm Mm -hmm. sure, uh, you know, if you've, if you've watched film poet videos, um, like the, and, they're, and, okay. and they're, emo- they're, they're, medium, they're okay. Medium they're, they're medium. Yeah. No, um, you know, super, super emotional, very story driven, you know, high quality uh, wedding videos. And so um, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking right now, what types of questions are you asking them? I mean, you want to get to know them and that's nice that you tell them that, hey, I'm, I'm trying to tell, you know, <clears throat> serve you the best, tell the best story so you can ask them whatever. But I'm sure you have things that you are purposefully asking. So what are, what are some of those things that you're asking them during that FaceTime call to pull some of this information out? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the obvious thing there is that anybody probably starts with, you know, we want to learn how they've met and everything. And a lot of times that tells me, um, you, you know, what to stay away from, uh, during mm-hmm. the day as much as mm-hmm. what to talk about. Right. Cause, um, uh, you know, some people's meeting stories are just, you know, they're like, oh, he dated my best friend for six years. And then, you know what I mean? Just stuff like, like, it's just, it's always something different. And so you got to like, feel this out and know kind of, it's very important to know what to focus on. And so, um, you know, most times it's nothing, you know, super special, but it's good to know. Um, from there, you, you, uh, I'll, I'll, I do a lot of follow-up questions. I can remember this one we just did in Hawaii, um, and you know, the question was, how did y'all meet? And it was like, oh, we met in eighth grade and, um, the, uh, we took a, a year off and, um, and she was just telling me, she's like, when we met back up in college and, uh, she just said, he came to me and was like, if we get back together, we're going to get married. And this is like freshman year of their college. And I remember asking the groom, um, I was just like, why, why did you, you know, why would you say that, you know, college, just dating someone that you, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, why would you say that right at the bat? And he was just like, I just couldn't stand the the idea of losing her again. And that just stuck with me. Like, this is what he's feeling. And this was like, when they got back together, the wedding day was his goal, right? And this was a big deal. Um, and uh, 
it was it was really cool finding that out because we decided to tell their story um, in a certain way using interviews, and I don't always do that. But that's something else I learned asking these questions um, is what storytelling uh, methods, what tools do I want to use to tell their story? Because it has to fit their personality. All right. So, um, I, and a lot, one of the big questions I ask after I've sort of chatted with them for a little bit is um, I'll ask which one of our films. Uh, uh, first, I won't just assume that they watched a bunch of our films, but um, you know, most of our couples have. And I'm just like, was there one that stood out to you that you connect with the most? Because I feel like That's a good question. I, 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 it's not because I want to make a cookie cutter of anything I've ever done. I, I try to never do that, right? And I don't think anybody wants to do that, right? Um, but it kind of points me in a direction, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it also lets me know a little bit about their personality because if they're like, "Oh, I like." This one where it was really just a bunch of natural dialogue and kind of a fun wedding with not much going on. Or if they like like this one with, you know, we did two interviews with a couple that was, you know, they were very extroverted and wanted to uh, chat. It, you know, it points me there. And then I let them know that there's different ways we can tell the story. And there are different tools that we can use to help get that story to come out. And that can be, and I give it a couple examples. Um, I preface that with, these are things we can do and offer, but I don't want you to ever do anything that's outside of your personality or outside of who mm -hmm. you guys are, right? These are just mm -hmm. things that that work. So, and I let them know, I'm like, what if if like a voiceover of your letters doesn't sound good, you know, sh tell me quick. Like, I'm, I don't like that, Matt, because it's just, it's great. That's perfect. That's so good to know. Um, Cause on the mm -hmm. wedding day, I don't want to ask someone to do it and then they do it and then it sucks because they just didn't want to be anyway when I could have been focused on something else, right? So it's good to know, um, sorry, my ear fell out. It's good to know <laughs> what they, what fits your couple. And so yeah. um, that's asking those, you know, giving a couple things, um, mentioning, you know, if you guys are giving gifts, uh, you know, we can do voiceover the letters um, and just fill them out, see what their reactions are. They'll be like, what, what do you think, you know, fits? And that kind of puts some of the, 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 it puts a little bit of that story on them because it was really, it's your job to uncover that story and figure out the best way to tell it. But it's also your job to f put them in the position to allow you to do that, right? And if you just show up on the day and you're going blind from there, it's a, it, it can be a lot harder. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday? But you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. Okay, yeah. so w one of the things that you're doing during these questions, during these interviews, is feeling them out. Um, mm. I love that question that you asked. Uh, asked which one of our films really did you were you drawn to? Because just because it's your favorite film that you have put together, you know, you're thinking of one. You know, I I've actually like one I did with like a really crazy, you know, cold open with lots of fast cuts and like that kind of stuff. It's one of my most like favorite films that I've ever edited. And there was a couple that came to me and they said, Nick, we love this film, but that's not for us. Like mm -hmm. I, I can see the talent in there and I can see your editing, but that we don't want anything like that. So those are, those yeah. are good questions to know. And a, a big thing when it comes to getting to know your couples is actually listening to the responses that they give and then doing follow-up questions rather than you having your set you know, okay, these are the questions I need to go through just to check them off the list, right? Listening right. to them and then finding that out and also being flexible. I really like that point that you made, you know, like, well, 
I really like it when the couple reads a letter, but if they don't like that, then okay, let's figure a different way to go because you want them to watch their video and think, oh, that was us, that was natural. And so I yeah. love, love this, doing more, you know, I do a, a last minute meeting, but it's kind of just more logistical, you know, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Where are we supposed to be on the same page? And you're really getting to know them and, and pulling this stuff out. I love, love all that information. So yeah, that's, and I would I, say I can, on our, I mean, like yeah. on our timeline, it'll say, you know, whatever time the bride prep is and it'll be like interview or voiceover or there's yeah. a gift giving slide. You know what I mean? It's all, I know exactly what I'm doing when we're there. Um, and, and that, that helps a lot. And I mostly know what I want to ask because of that. Well, I, I know what she's anticipating, what she's excited about, uh, you know, and, and then you also just so much of what we're doing is discovering things on the day as well, but it's, you know, you're just the more prepared you are, the better. And, and I think that that's that, that prepared comment. Um, I I've talked with several friends that are doing more commercial stuff and they've said, Nick, I couldn't do what you do because there's no pre-production. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I I can't do that. But that and and we've seen this before. That's really what you're doing is you're doing your pre-production and kind of getting everything figured out. And, you know, the thing that I wanted to talk about was how are you in your films, you know, really pulling out all this emotion, you know, making these lasting films that are really heirloom type stuff. And I think that that's probably your answer. Right. Just just getting to know them and, and that stuff. It's, it's a big, it's a big part of it. It's, it's, so, there's so much more to storytelling than, um, just like collecting dialogue though. You know what I mean? Like there's some, there's some letters that a groom might give that is like, it doesn't, it should not exist as a voiceover that, that, you know, some people may just be like, Hey, read that. I'm going to stuff it in your film. Um, and you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and so yeah, totally. there's this, there's this thing. Like, I remember the first time we ever did a, a, a voiceover of a letter, it was like, I don't know, probably 2013 uh, or 2014. And it was like, um, that on that day, I was like, hey, Pacey, I just want you to uh, snap a cell phone pic of the letter when, um, uh, you know, when it's given to the bride or whatever, whenever you can, if the groom finishes writing it, I can't remember. Uh, and by the way, that's always a good idea to, to do is to have a cell phone pic of it because if you get an opportunity to have them voice over the letter later, they'll be like, well, I don't have it. Be like, oh, well, here you go. Um, but that's a uh, nugget. Love that. That's a nugget. <laughs> Love it. I, I can take that one a little bit further as well is um, just since we I digressed a bit, but um, you can take that. And if for some reason you don't have time to get a voiceover on the wedding day, um, I have a, 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 a little trick where I will um, text the letter to the bride, you know, after the honeymoon or something, Hey, we want to use some of this letter. We, you know, whatever. And um, I just say, go into your closet take your iPhone, flip it over, use the voice memos app, face your clothes. I said, you know, I just let them know it kills and hold it, hold them, hold the phone about six inches away from your mouth and just read this like you're reading it to your groom. And I've had some wonderful voiceovers done that way. Great. Um, so really smart. And, and having that on your phone makes it super easy. Cause you're just like, uh, you know, she'll have to use two phones or something to do it, but, uh, you know, it, it's really useful. And, and, by the way, on that, our, our we have a film on our YouTube channel from Mexico, and that entire voiceover is a, uh, it's um, two iPhones. We did a post wedding interview, um, so I popped my knuckles, uh, <laughs> and it was done like that: is one iPhone here, one iPhone here, like a microphone, because I basically wrote this idea of there was so much we discovered on the wedding day, like at the reception, and I was you know it's not going to come out in the story, but I wanted it told. So. Yeah. And that's just getting creative. And I I think one thing that really stands out to me is I've evolved as a storyteller. You know, I would just use, you said, you know, like just stuff the letter reading as a voiceover because it happened or you feel like this obligation to include certain things or um, as opposed to like looking at it as the artist and trying to tell like the real story. I think a lot of letters, you know, will have something similar to like, I, I'm so happy to be marrying you. You're the best person ever. You're amazing. Like all these kind of fluff, you know, moments, but like what I'm looking for, and I, it seems as though you're doing this as well is like the actual meat of what is the, the heartbeat of what is going on with the Mm -hmm. day. What is, Mm -hmm. you know, the heartbeat of the letter? Is there just like one little line that matches with another line that mom said at the rehearsal dinner that like weaves well together. And the more that you do this and the more that you're thinking about the actual story, you can be 
making notes on your phone during the day. Oh, mom said something here or, Ooh, this is a good, you know, and then it's like your Mexico film. It's like, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have seen that one, but, um, it, you know, you, you're like, Oh, I really want this now. And it's after the fact. And then you got creative and said, well, here's a solution. I can have them record this like this. And that would work instead of just kind of being, you know, given what you're, you're given just like, oh, okay, I'm a fly on the wall. So, you know, when telling those real stories, if you're listening, you know, there's like Matt is saying, there's this pre-production asking the questions and getting to know them. But then there's also just having your spidey senses kind of up during the the wedding day as well as the, during the edit itself. So, are there things that you're doing actively on the wedding day, listening, um, you know, or is that all kind of pre-planned? Like you know that most of the story beforehand, or is it kind of a hybrid of the both? How do you how do you go about that? Because I think that you're really really good at telling real stories. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And I think that's what really you're selling in your films is like these really beautiful stories. That's what people are falling in love with. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, every wedding's different. So it's hard to, um, it's hard to do the same thing every wedding day, right? It's the, right. what you do is, you know, make a film and then the way you do it is going to be different just depending. So, but you do need to be listening on the day, observing. And, um, I think because of my personality type, I just kind of take things in like that. I can be like, okay, she's frustrated and just kind of looking around the room. Um, yeah. Doing things like that. But, uh, you know, there's a lot we learn on the wedding day. Um, there's a lot that the couple just might forget to tell you, which, you know, I always tell them to like, if anything else comes to mind, you know, um, before the wedding, you know, send me a text or something or something you can't tell the groom because uh, y'all are sitting there together. This is a right. FaceTime chat. Um, you know, let me know so I can be one step ahead. Um, and so uh, that's, you know, being a step ahead of everything is is very important just to know when that gift's coming and know that the bridesmaid has it and she doesn't give a crap about photo and video and she's about to hand it to the 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 bride right now, but makeup's not done, you know, something like that. You gotta mm -hmm. kind of put the brakes, be like, hey, let's wait until, uh, you know, things are done. So, you know, we're learning on the day uh, a lot. And, um, and it would like, as an example on the Mexico film, I mean, we showed up the day before the wedding and, uh, the, the bride was just like, oh, uh, you know, she talked about the groom's like alter ego if he has tequila and it came, he came out last night. And I was like, that's funny. Um, you know, <laughs> you know and, and then at the reception, the same thing happened. But I didn't like push for that story during the day. It, first off, it was a rush. There's two different photo teams. And it was very difficult. And we were getting golf carted all over the place. But, um, you know, that was one of those things I like knew that happened and was prepped for to try to get later. But um you just have to be, I think the best thing to do is to try to change, like anyone who's making wedding films, think about it like as a, um, as a true documentary film, um, like that you would see on Netflix, right? Like something like these, like the way that people go and make these great documentaries, they, it, up front, they have a general good idea of the story, but it also unfolds around them. Apparently my ear holes are not average uh but the um the uh the day unfolds as they're shooting as well or not the day but you know what that film's going to become it might be over a year but you're basically doing that in a day right mm -hmm. it's the same sort of thing and so there's discovery up front there's discovery during the day and then there's creativeness at the end when you put it all together yeah that's good, man. Yeah, that's, that's just going to really, church over here. Yeah, really, really good. Um, and, and if I may just say on the story front, and I'm sorry to, to uh, say it, keep <laughs> it's I, I just I feel that it's so important for new when you first start doing this part of you just wants to do cool shots, right? I did. I'm like, man, I just want to get I mean, it was a glide cam at the time and just run around and do something stupid. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and you know, the, the people can focus a lot on the tools and, and then, you know, you can focus a lot on your shooting in a more solid way, but brides and really what really matters is uh, truly like telling a story. And the purpose of that is to have someone connect and 
feel that wedding film, not not see it, not hear it, feel it. It's a big difference than, you know, making a like a, I mean, you know, we all do one minute Instagram trailers. That's a little different. That's hard to make that happen then. Um, but building, like asking questions at the beginning of your film and, and answering them at the end and like a certain storytelling techniques, they can really inspire couples to spend more on their film. And they, that serves the couple better because it allows you to spend more time creating the stories. And at the end, they have this, this video that they literally, I mean, will watch the rest of their lives. And, um, it, you know, I, I just, I feel like it is the most important thing anyone can focus on if they're going to be, you know, improving their craft is the storytelling. Yeah. Everything else is secondary. Um, and I don't mean like lip service to storytelling, you know, by just dialogue from, you know, whatever you can pick up. I mean, like true right. storytelling. Right. The man, that's, that's such, that's such solid information. You know, you're like, whenever it comes to wedding videos, I think the very first thing that people really get enamored with, right, is, is the cameras and the look and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it's almost like, you know, we have this order of things where it's like, we want to get something that looks really pretty. And then maybe we mess with audio, then maybe we get our reception lighting, right? Like that kind of just, you know, when you're starting out, that kind of seems to be the thing. And, you know, um, I think it was Rob Adams in his creative live class from, you know, 2011, 12, somewhere back in there, you know, he was like, people can actually forgive not very good footage if the audio part is really, really good. But you can have the best looking footage and if your audio is bad, there's like no makeup for that, right? That, yeah. you know, like psychologically, that's kind of how we are. And so what you're saying is even a step further than that is, you know, we talk about the basics all the time and getting like steady shots and not, sh but you're saying, um, that stuff's important, but if you can tell a really good story and get to know your couples and that is going to be so much better for your career, that is going to serve your couples so much better by creating this thing that is actually them and telling a story. And, um, you know, if you can develop those chops like really early on, then that mm -hmm. is only going to improve. And then your filmmaking is only going to improve and it'll just you know, you know, a few years in, you're charging, you know, five figures for a wedding and, and all this stuff because you have built this thing for so long that is moving and, 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 and inspires people and wants them to watch it again and share it with so many people. And you can feel it. I love how you said that. Feel it, not just see it and watch it, but feel it. That, yeah. Thanks. Great stuff. And, and, and it really, I mean, I, with, with what you're saying too, um, if you could focus on, you know, you only have so many hours in a day. So what are you going to work on when you're practicing? Because a lot of times you're just executing, you know, the wedding and, and with the storytelling that transfers into so many other things you can help. I mean, if you can do storytelling, uh, well, you can help planners if they need like a little film or something like that, you got it. Mm. You know what I mean? If it, if you feel like going into commercial work later, you got it. Cinematographers like, cinematographers at the lower level don't get paid very well at all. You know, you, you guys may have, I mean, you can, it's just very hard and they're, they're good. They kick, kick the crap out of me or what I could do on a set, you know? And I'm just like, man, that's, you know, but story, you know, storytelling can, you can take that and hire, you know, great cinematographers and do really good things. So, um, and it, honestly, it's, we've never been, um, we've never been big on, uh, we we never run many ads or anything. I can just say that the only thing we've ever really done is try to work on our storytelling. Um, and there's so many ways to kind of get your work out there. And then, um, but I think if you're producing stories that people want to share, <clears throat> it's 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 got to be like the the number one way because you can't you're going around a planner who might have a go to person at that point, right? They might be like, I only book. And, it, um, and I know a lot of, uh, I think networking is great. And, uh, you know, it's awesome, uh, can be awesome for your business. But y'all know, like, as well as I do, like, there's certain planners that they may be, you, you know, John, you may be their go-to person. And there might be someone in the area that is, you know, like, they have zero chance of getting with them because you've got them on lockdown. But I've I've done a couple mentor sessions with people. They were like, yeah, I was trying to network with so-and-so. And, you know, they just cut me off and were just like, 
you know, I, I don't book anybody but them. And, um, you know, if, if the bride finds your film because it's out there and she connects with that story more than she connects with who the planner is mm-hmm. recommending, guess who's shooting with that planner? Uh, you mm-hmm. are. And then you get the opportunity to make a great impression with a planner and build from there. How do you deliver your wedding films? Dropbox? Disc? A subscription service that is way too expensive? We have the answer for you. Wedflow. Wedflow is a cloud-based digital delivery system that we love. I personally have been using Wedflow for months and I can't get over how great of a service it is. First off, Wedflow is pay per project. That's right, you only pay for the data that you need. Wedflow uses a premium viewing experience accessible on all modern devices and playback up to 4K. With custom branding and theming, Wedding filmmakers can deliver an experience that's truly on brand from start to finish. Head to howtofilmweddings.com slash wedflow and upload your first project for as little as $1 per gigabyte. Wedflow, a whole new take on wedding film delivery. Yeah, and I think what you said about, like, you know, Nick was talking about, about feeling the story, telling the story. That is not just listening to the dialogue and putting it in the order that like in putting it randomly into your films, you know, like your YouTube channel has is humongous because people find your video strangers and they want to share it with others because they felt something whenever they pushed play on that video. And it's like, oh my goodness, this is so good. I have to share this with my niece. She's getting married or whatever. And that's taken you all over the world because you focused on not putting dialogue in order, but like thinking of a storyline and telling a real story that matters. And like, that's different for different weddings. And that is the beauty of what we do. And that is that muscle that you have to keep working out and flexing and trying. And, you know, it's like, oh, I don't like to tell stories like this. That didn't work. But like, if you stay over here in your comfort bubble, when you're telling these stories, you're never going to get to this place of fulfillment like the fulfillment side of things, whenever I really, you know, I just published our Italy, the film we did in Italy. And like the story was so deep to me, like Mm -hmm. it meant something to me. Like I watch it and I get the chills and it just, it's like, this is so fulfilling. I love this. And you know, if it's another wedding that I just did where it's like, man, they were kind of just, they didn't give me anything. They didn't like, I didn't connect with them. I didn't have any like there was no story to really tell. I felt like I didn't do my job of capturing that. But like, if you can get in that, that vein of being able to get those real stories and be able to figure out, Oh, this would be a cool way to tell those stories. That is when the magic happens. That, that is when you can start charging, you know, like Matt's saying, you know, $10,000 or more because yeah, that bride from wherever saw this video on YouTube or Facebook or wherever and says, I want that per, I need that person at my wedding. And so I want to talk to Nick, um, just about like this, the way that you're pull, like, I know we were talking Nick about just like how he's pulling stories together. Um, I, I think that it was, um, Ashley B asked, she said, ask how he builds the story and how he segments his films. And I think that that's a good like leeway into kind of once you get into the story building, you know, you've done the interview with the couple you've shot on the wedding day, what kinds of things, are like light bulbs going off in your head when it comes to editing the story? How are you segmenting all that stuff together? What is your process? Okay, yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that a little bit. One thing I wanna say up front is, um, just to, from what you were saying, John, is um, mm-hmm. just to, uh, uh, I think anyone listening should take the pressure off themselves as well if there's just not a story there. It's okay. If you can only, your goal should be able to make each wedding as good as it can be from what you learned, right? And not, and not mean as good as it can be because you got lazy and and didn't, you know, you have to push, but then be okay with just be like, look, this is like, I'm going to make the couple happy. I'm going to make a solid film for them and um, they're all going to love it. But you know, it does, you don't have to outdo yourself every time you'll, you'll kind of drive yourself crazy. But the the thing is, is. And how you compared it to like, you know, exercising a muscle, uh, you know, is what, should, what it really is. If you're, you can learn a lot, you know, working to tell, um, to make a wedding film that 
isn't that great because sometimes you, it's really hard to take something that was really, it was a boring day, maybe, you know, whatever. And yeah. you still make something good out of it. That's actually harder than some of the ones that you're just handed gold. Um, but yeah. you will be everybody that, um, has shot weddings for more than, you know, two years has had one or two potentially huge wedding films that they have shot. I'm sure of it. Potentially mm -hmm. huge, meaning like that there was a story there that would have um, gone beyond the couple's expectations and everything else. And it was, it's would have been something that people would have shared and talked about and all these things. And I know, I mean, I've shot some that I didn't get to make something as good as it could have been from it. You know, I know that that's there, you know, looking back. So being prepared for when they come across, you know, uh, um, yep. is really helpful, but take the pressure off if they're, if it's, you know, not there every wedding as well. As far as our process yeah, goes, when, when we're, um, writing, uh, when we're doing, uh, putting the story together, one of the things I found myself, I like to do if we say, you know, there's speeches, um, you know, I'm, maybe I'm trimming the doc edit from the rehearsal speeches or something. Um, you know, I'm marking the stuff that is good right off the bat. I don't like to use like the simple one-liners and speeches um, unless I'm gonna work them in in a certain way or tie it with something. Um, I like to, speeches that actually tell a story within themselves or ask questions that something else can be answered, uh, answered in another way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking for those, placing markers on them and just so that I can go back to, once that's done, I may um, take all those, put them in a separate project and look at it. And I like to write out, um, I, I do it on the computer, but I, I like to write down who said what, what they said, you know, general, so I can look at it. Cause your, your brain is not good at storing all this stuff before yeah. it's a story. You know, story is a method of being able to repeat what happened, but it's not a story yet. You're just looking at this pile of speeches, writing it all out allows you to, you know, once you've already trimmed out all the crap, you know, you might have like eight to 10 statements allows you to look at it and um, not try to hold it in your head, but it, just analyze it and start moving things and be like, what kind of order, what kind of question could I make the viewer ask at the beginning that they're gonna be hooked and have to see that question answered? That's gold right there. So just good. like, if you can do that with your film, mm -hmm. um, you've, got, you've got something right off the bat. And um, so thinking in those, along those lines, but also looking for desire. Um, and it doesn't always have to be the groom's desire for the bride or vice versa. I've done a wedding film. It was in 2015 or something. It wasn't, uh, you know, like a viral film or anything, but in this little community in Mississippi, everybody there saw it and they hired us for like, like it was crazy. And it was just basically the dad uh, gave this beautiful speech and he, he told a story. He just said 20 years ago or 30 years ago, whatever, I got married and, um, told a story about how the photographer took a picture of he and his wife right before they went down the aisle or he and, um, excuse me, his, uh, future wife and her dad right before they went down the aisle. Right. Um, and they just turn around and look at the camera. And he said, and the day Mary Beth was born, this is his daughter. He's like, I, all I could think about was I get to take that picture one day. That's mm. the dad's desire at the beginning in that film, you know, that kicks it off. And it also makes you ask the question, well, is he gonna get to take that picture, right? That's like this setup mm -hmm. in the first 30 seconds that kinda, it's hard to turn that film off. It's not, I didn't, it's not shot particularly well, um, but it, that's just an example of something I was looking for. And it's it's unique, but it's, it's funny because it's the dad's desire of something that he wants, but at the same time, there's this parallel story running with the bride and groom and, and how they're in love. And so you can tell multiple stories at the same time that are running together and go back and forth. And that's really what makes something engaging as well. So don't limit yourself yeah. to, to one simple, who wants this one thing, you know, you're, you're fine with threading as I like to call, um, several storylines together. And when you can bounce between the two, uh, it starts to get in, engaging and, um, it's very activating for like the viewer to watch. Cause there's like, Whoa, what's going yeah. on here? You know, there's several things at once. Ooh, that's a good stuff, Nick. <laughs> really good stuff. I like it. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. 
Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. And that is all such solid information specifically about, you know, finding the story and looking that I know that early on, I was really just looking for like emotional parts of speeches, you know, like that kind of stuff that would make my people cry or, you know, like that, that's, that's what I wanted to do. And so there was, I'm sure some great stuff that I didn't use because in my mind it wasn't that emotional, but I'm sure that there was lots of like story elements in that kind of stuff that I tossed out because in my mind it wasn't wasn't what it should be but you know yeah. keep in mind it you know what what is a question that's going on what's how is this moving the story along you know that kind of stuff and then also mm-hmm. you know this this is for your couples it's not for me or for other videographers you know so it, you, you, if you keep that in the forefront of your mind you are probably going to include stuff maybe that if you were if you didn't have that in your mind you might not have included so uh that's Great, great yeah. info there. Yeah, and, and one one thing um, that I've just recognized that uh, we do when we're building out the story um, is I'll get you know I'll be working on it and, and get all excited because it's starting to like kind of come to life, right? Uh, it's it's sort of like uncovering a fossil. You know, the story's there. Mm-hmm. It's your job to find it without messing it up, and um, it, it, being able to come back uh, or, or go to Pacey. And, and restate what I think this story is in two sentences max is so important. Mm-hmm. And that is an exercise that I would suggest that anybody tries to do. Uh, if you can't state what your film's about uh, in one or two sentences, you have too many things going on or it's not folk, you know, there's a problem there. Um, and and it should be in a, in a way that kind of makes you want to watch it when you say those two sentences. Oh, that's great. Man, that's really good. Writing your own synopsis, but to the point, really, really good. Nick, he's good, dude. He he is good. good. He is good. He is good. (laughs) So now we're going to shift gears just a little bit and ask our question of the day presented by Weditor. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And um, again, in our Facebook group, we had lots of questions. There were several that had to do uh, with audio. Both Ryan Stark and Steve Corey basically asked, what's your process, including programs and that kind of stuff, you use to edit your audio? Yeah. Um, so back in the, uh, the band days, uh, that I talked about at first, um, one of my jobs in the band was I was the audio engineer and, um, it was really difficult at first to, you know, learn all this. Um, one of the tricks with, uh, being a sound engineer is you have to be able to make the human voice, uh, stand out and apart from music. And it was a rock band. So it's like compressed poppy music um and that's something that we got you know we're really good at uh, and when it carried over to when we started uh the film poets and it was tricky for me uh at first because um you know taking unprocessed sound uh we're slap we're placing hopefully well-chosen music below it that is exactly like uh, rock music for the most part, you know, if it's indie or whatever your song is, you're taking spoken voice, which is very dynamic, and laying it over a, uh, a music track that is, you know, pretty consistent in its sound, and the only way to have that actually feel um, properly mixed um, is to process the, that sound really well. And the, or you can have to turn down the music so much that you lose impact. Um, and something I've noticed uh, when I have, um, I've spoke at a conference last year, I had some folks walk up to me. They're like, hey, check out this film. Uh, and and the stuff was gorgeous. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is a cool story here. And there were several times where I'm watching and I'm like, 
what did he just say? Uh, or, um, you know, I have to kind of lean in. To, it, it's an effort to uh, just absorb this story. And you always want it to be as effortless as, po as possible for your viewer mm. to take, take in the story. You don't want them thinking about certain things. You don't want them to have to like actively uh, listen. And uh, should I say, you know, they should just be like in this relaxed state and taking it all in. Um, and so, you know, most um, most of what I do for uh, our audio processing has come from what I learned from uh, being a sound engineer. And it's I've used certain presets that basically deal with the, the main problems that happen um, when we're on the wedding day because we're using multiple sources of audio and um you know we have a lav mic on the outside of the groom's jacket and then maybe the bride has one on the inside of her dress and then there's one under the groom's collar later because the ceremony's outside and that's like laying your head up against someone's neck and you know it has this totally different sound to it so um it causes all this these problems when you come into processing uh your sound and the main thing I want to do when processing the sound is to make it so that the story shines through because, mm -hmm. you know, like we've talked about this whole podcast, it's the the story comes from your sound. It has to be good. And having unprocessed sound is the equivalent of shooting log and not color grading it. In my opinion, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. it is that, it is that bad. And, um, so you have to, you need to be doing something. And so, um, I've made, a set of presets that I've been using for the past three or four years that are super easy because I realized that, you know, microphones have slight differences. I mean, if you hear like a microphone shoot out, you're just like, you know, if they're decent quality lav lavalier mics or speech mics, you're like, they're basically the same. One might have a, you know, a certain characteristic that the other doesn't. The main thing, coloring sound or mic positions technique and, um, by technique, sorry, that's an audio term. It's just like the person giving the mic, uh, giving the speech on at a rehearsal dinner, you know, it's like how close are they to the mic? Generally people stay pretty far back. But um, so I have a set of presets that I use and um, I never even thought about it until I, you know, was talking to some other wedding filmmakers who had no idea they should be processing their audio. And so I've created um, these presets that are just like color grading your uh your films this is uh what i call um it's like grading your audio so it's called sound grades and um they're four presets for different positions that uh you might use on your mic where it's like a standard speech mic live on the outside a buried live in the collar um and, and then on the bride and they all have to be processed differently in a certain way mm -hmm. um but it's super easy and that's what I, that's what i want it to be because this is for people who you know they want all this stuff to get out of their way so they can tell the story and focus on it because that's what i need mm. you know when i'm sitting down looking at the story that's what i need so um just sticking that on and it gets you your sound perfect and in a way where you know you're processing your audio right if you only have to dip the music track about four decibels when the dialogue comes on top and if you're going down six eight ten to make room there, there are a lot of things that need to be done to, to keep you from losing that impact. Because when the audio goes, when the music drops that much, you're like, you know, it just all that drive uh, from the, that's coming from the music gets lost. And um, mm -hmm. and on the opposite end of that, it's very easy to take in that story. So, Man, like as he's talking about his stuff, like he's dropping all sorts of information about, you know, how you should mix your audio and your sound and all that together. And I'm just like... Where, where, where can I get these things? Where, if, if people are listening to this and they're like, oh, I need some sound grades, where, where do they go to get some sound grades? Well, we've got the uh, site at soundgrades.io and then um, our wedding website just has an education section. They'll be on there as well. And That's awesome. um, you can check them out there. And, uh, you know, I just, no matter what, uh, you know, it, if, if what, what you do, just, I'm begging anybody to start processing their audio and and, and properly, uh, and um, it's the it's the number one thing I think someone could do today to improve their storytelling, because it makes what's coming out the other end when someone is watching the film just have so much more impact. It's and it's like I, I don't know I, I'm just super passionate yeah. about it. I know that 
it's easy to get into color grading and all these other things and and that's fun as well um but story first and so you can go grab those like for the listeners that aren't picking this up this is something new that you're offering from what i'm from when we were talking before and um when we release this episode um they will be still on like a pre-release so we'll have the the link if i'm correct matt um, for you to grab these before they go kind of out to the, the general public. So we'll have all that in the show notes below. I'll be picking that up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because definitely. it's definitely one of those things that like people just, you know, drop that audio, you know, from the lav mic or whatever. And I, I'm guilty, you know, just it's, oh, it sounds pretty good. Like it, it it's clean. It's clean enough. But like the difference that you can hear in the way it makes you feel feel if the richness of the the voice is actually pushed or you know you've compressed or you've eq'd or the different things or like going through and processing that audio is a huge difference maker in going from charging three four thousand dollars to seven eight you know it's like it 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 is a feeling that it all adds up together you know with your sound your color your branding all these things add up to get to this point. And so if you are striving to get better or really bump that up, I would implore you to go check out that link for sure. Well, Matt, can, can I ask you guys something? Yeah. Before okay. we, yeah. I know, Flip it. So go for it. I, I know um, y'all have interviewed a lot of folks over the past uh, year. So um, what, what's not, what, what did you guys like this year with everyone, you know, you've chatted with like what, what's been like something that's, uh, you've you've learned that you feel is like the, I don't know, a, like a big takeaway or that was a you know kind of changed the way you did business or whatever. I'm just I'm just curious because y'all y'all taken in so much knowledge like from from everyone up until today. Yeah. You had great guests, so you know, like, like what, what have they told you? <laughs> one I gotta know. One thing that that comes to mind, and I hope I'm stealing John, so he has to think of something else. Um, we had Ricardo Fasoli on. Um, couple, I don't know, in December. And one of the things that he really talked about was, um, he asked the question, what, what cover band do you know of has ever become famous? He was like, as we're, as we're wedding videographers, we're watching other people's stuff and we just, there's so much emulation and, you know, being cover bands that you don't really ever find your true voice. You don't ever try, you know, find who you are and tell your story and that kind of stuff. And that was something that I was like, man, that's so, so impactful, so powerful. You know, it, it's okay to be inspired by others, but not just to continually copy them because, you know, they've had success with so them. You have, well, y- you will. So I, I really, I thought, I thought that was amazing. So, John, was that what you were going to say? No, but that's really good. It's it's very interesting <laughs> to pos- the position we're in, Matt, because it's like we've had over 80 podcasts at this point, and we've talked to so many brilliant minds when it comes to running your business and running, you know, the art of your the shooting the audio the you know marketing there's just all this wealth of information Mm -hmm. and so nick and i are in this very unique and very humbled position to sit here behind the microphone and get to interact with so many different people and to me i think the big takeaway from me for me there's two things number one is like we were i would say a little bit scared to start this podcast um, not scared, but like wondering if people would just trash us and we would get made fun of. And, you know, it's a very vulnerable. And I, I think that I've learned that the happiest things in life come when you make yourself vulnerable and uncomfortable. And so like this on the other side of it, hindsight, you know, 2020, it's like, well, yeah, that was a great idea to start this podcast. And, but like, we didn't know when we hit, you know, upload on that first YouTube video if anyone would watch it. And as it's Mm -hmm. grown and doubled and tripled and thousands and thousands of people around the world now, it's like, you know, and having influence with just people messaging us every day. And like that, that has been a huge takeaway for me is like, if there's something that you want to start, uh, whether that be a YouTube channel or a podcast, or if you want to start telling different stories or you want to get into destinations or whatever it is, like a lot of people are, are paralyzed before they even start because they don't have all of the answers figured out. And if you listen to episode one compared to today, you know, we didn't even record video on the first episode. We used different microphones. We didn't know how to compress the audio and do like it's, you know, and I'm still I'm bumping my desk and it makes a thump noise still. And I bought a new arm that's getting here any day. And like, so we're constantly now fine tuning. So that 
that's the first thing, which is, I know this is a long answer, sorry. Um, the main thing though for me on a different note is that your community and who you surround yourself with is so, so important to your business. And to be able to call a lot of these people that we've had, you know, on our podcast friends and be able to text them or send them messages or, Mm -hmm. hey, what do you think of this? You know, I was finishing that Italy film and me and uh, Henry Martins jumped on a FaceTime call for like 45 minutes and just talked about like, what do you think about this, these colors, these shots, this, and like getting that group of people, whether it's, you know, industry leaders in education or just like your group of friends that you can like really bounce ideas off of like the community side is when I was able to really bump up my, my pricing, my branding and having fresh eyes that are not me looking at my work, looking at my brand and being able to handle, you know, helping them sharpen, you know, us sharpen each other. So long answer, but those are the things that stood out to me. Man, John, John, John does a really great job of me saying something. And then he says something that was just like, the perfect answer, you know, and, uh, I'm, whatever, I whatever. <laughs> really, Not really right. good. Well, Matt, thanks for asking that question. Appreciate that. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating, um, stuff really. I, and, and, you know, you said fresh eyes, John, that's what Pacey and I actually call it. That's what we call it. Like, um, when I'm like 90% done with a film, I'm like, Pacey, I need fresh eyes. I'm out. You know, yeah. like I'm just, yeah. uh, come look at this. And then she looks and like, this is a problem. This isn't, you know, this is sort of like, it's super helpful to yeah. have that, to have someone that can do that for you, um, no matter who it is. I thought about like creating a, you, know, you guys could do this actually, like a fresh eyes group, Facebook group, um, where it's literally like someone in a different market, but in the same price range that for people who don't have like a creative partner or something that they can do this with, you know, that you could like literally be like, look, this film's almost done. What do you think? And get proper feedback without like, but good, honest stuff. Cause it's, it's kind of hard to get someone that, it's kind of hard to get an employee to be like, you know, hey, is, 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 this shot sucks. What's this doing here? Or, you know, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy for your spouse to do that or someone that's, you know, can kind of set you straight. So I've just yeah. found that to be really helpful and gives yeah. you that extra push. It's huge. 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 Well, good. Good. Yeah, good info for like all another around. Hour, we I really think could. So. I, I mean, I think we, we could love to have but... him back on. Yeah, we, we yeah. definitely should figure that out. So, Matt, for people that, um, you know, aren't following you, you know, would like to learn more about you and, you know, just follow you along, where where can they find you? Oh, yeah, um, we have a YouTube channel. It's just YouTube forward slash The Film Poets. Um, we're going to be, uh, we post weddings on there. I have a, a, a backlog that it needs to be posted on there right now. Um, we're on Instagram at The Film Poets. And uh, those are our two main places uh, that we, that we kind of live and um, just kind of follow along there. Okay, cool, cool. Well, man, we really, really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much for, for taking the time and sharing some very, very valuable information with our listeners. So thank you. Hey, thank you all for having me. It's been an honor. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. We want to tell you all to go check out soundgrades.io. Make sure you pick up the sound presets that Matt is offering. They are going to elevate your films to another level. Also check out howtofilmweddings.com. We have lots of, of templates and stuff in our shop. One of those is a budget guide. This, as we're looking forward to 2020, can help you plan out your expenses and your reports and all the money that's coming in to make sure that you have the money when you need it. Leave us a review on YouTube, on your podcast or whatever you're listening to. And until next time, we will see you. Happy New Year. 